Welcome to another edition of Green is Good, and we're so excited to have with us today Debbie Miller. She's the owner of Honest Potions and Lotions. Welcome to Green is Good, Debbie. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Oh, uh, we're happy to have you. And before we get talking about your great brand, Honest Potions and Lotions, Debbie, talk a little bit about the Debbie Miller story, your journey leading up to founding this wonderful company and how you even got here. Well, I've done a lot of things in my short life. Uh, many of them have led up to Anna's. I've been a lifelong environmentalist and herbal gardener and organic gardener. Um, I've even done performing, writing, playwriting, monologues. Uh, currently, one of my little day jobs is teaching English to immigrants. But all of these things have led up to my business, and I use all of those skills in uh, Anna's. That is wonderful. And for our listeners out there that want to follow along, please go to www.Anna's Potions and Lotions. Just spell it out. Dot com. I'm on the site now. It's a beautiful website. Talk a little bit about the idea. How did you have the idea, and when did you have the idea for uh, making Anna's Potions and Lotions? Okay, it probably started before I moved to New York. I lived in Tennessee for a few years. Okay. I'm not from there, but I lived in East Tennessee, and I was a gardener, and I belonged to an herbal society where people grew herbs, and I learned a lot. And one of the members had made a rose cream that was wonderful. She distilled the oil from rose bushes in her backyard. And I bought some of it, and I wanted to buy more, and she moved away. So this kind of stayed in my mind. This was probably in the mid-'90s. And after I moved to New York in 1997, I just kept that in mind, and I got the idea probably 10 years ago for Anna's. And I wanted to replicate that rose cream. Huh. And then when did you actually start the company? Uh, the, the business officially launched on a small scale in 2006. Wonderful. And I'm, I've done everything myself. Uh, self-financed. You. I've started the business out of my apartment. And, you know, I do everything. And, it's, and, and, you're, and, and you're the CEO and you also are the creator of uh, Anna's. And so, so what kind of products? I'm on the site now. Again, for mm-hmm. our listeners, it's www.annaspotionsandlotions.com. What kind of products do you manufacture? I make what could be called beauty, uh, I guess, skin care and beauty products. I make organic moisturizing creams, lip balms, and perfume potions. So as an entrepreneur, did you have to go find a source of small batch producers that would make it to your specifications and your quality? I haven't done that. No, I make everything myself. It's uh, handcrafted in small wow. batches. No kidding. It's all handcrafted. That is the, and, and so tell, talk about what makes your products so special instead of going to a a big store and buying products that are made in mass, since these are really handcrafted products, what makes them special? Uh, What makes them special? One thing is my signature product, which is Anna's sweet rose cream, which is that rose cream I was talking about. Yeah. I've replicated and I use it's all organic ingredients, including uh, Bulgarian rose oil, which is, you know, a little bit expensive, but it's the best rose oil in the world. And everybody, I think, knows the benefits of rose oil and rosehip seed oil for the skin. It's one of the best things you could use. Um, So in addition to that, my products are almost 100% organic. I can't say completely organic because... You know, uh, it, it, as organic as they can be. Most of my ingredients are sourced organically. Uh, my products are also vegan, and I don't use any, I don't even use beeswax. So uh, they're vegan and cruelty-free, and um, the handcrafted nature is what I think. You know, small batches. I don't use chemical preservatives or any artificial colorings. When did you launch your website? If you started the business in 2006, when did the website follow? The website was probably three years later. I started out with a general website, and then I made it into an e-commerce website Wonderful. and started an Etsy store uh, a couple years after that. And um, 
that's where that is. And how do and how do people and how did you get the word out? You know, it was so interesting. For, for three years, you did it without a website. How did you get the word out? And then once you've had the website, how has that increased your scale uh, uh, you know, of of sales? How does that work? Well, it's you know the the search engine optimization is a factor. You know, you always work on that. I've expanded into other social media, like I have a Pinterest site, I have a blog. I send out an e uh, e newsletter. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. You know, so that's one component. Right. Uh, I also reach out to local um, stores in the community. I've yeah. I've started to do that, um, and expanding my media presence is is on my plan right now. That's so interesting. But before you even had the website, how, when you first started the company in '06, how did you yeah. get the word out? Like, where did you first make your first sales? Uh, it started out, you know, word of mouth yeah. from friends and family. And it's just really, I believe that a business like mine that starts out small with handcrafted products is really word of mouth. Yeah, you're right. So talk about, you know, talk a little bit about the, pro- you know, you talked about some of the rose oil and other nice things you put in your products. What don't you put in your products? What do you make sure you don't put in so it doesn't affect people's health and wellness? Okay, um, no artificial dyes, no dyes, no detergents, mm. no uh, sodium lauryl sulfate, no sorbates, which are um, uh, artificial preservatives. I don't have any animal byproducts, petroleum byproducts, uh, phthalates. Let's see, what else? Um, let's see, that's about it. That's great. None of that stuff. Just natural uh, essential oils, organic essential oils different vegetable butters and vegetable waxes. And you're able to keep up with the demand uh, even out of your your house. You're still handcrafting everything pretty much out of your home still. Yes, but I'm going to be exhibiting in the Green Festival this weekend, and I anticipate that that exposure is going to take my business to the next level. Is this the first time you've ever um, had exposure at the Green Festival? Yes, this is the first uh, Green Festival that I've exhibited at. I've attended. There have been, I think this is the third one in New York City. I attended before, but I've never exhibited. And the whole experience has been really great. And what made you, what made you decide that this was the right place for your products right now? Um, one thing is that, you know, one of the um, sponsors of the Green Festival is Green America, mm-hmm. which, is, which is an organization that many years ago was called Co-op America. And I've actually been a member for probably 20 years. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm, I'm very familiar with that company, or that organization, and I respect them totally. They're involved in fair trade as well as environmental issues, uh, human rights. So everything is just a really good fit for me, Got really it. good fit. Everybody I've talked to from that organization and met with has been kind of aligned with my values. Got it. I understand. And for our listeners who just joined us, we're very honored to have today the owner of Anna's Potions and Lotions. It's Debbie Miller, and you can look her up at www. Anna's Potions and Lotions.com, and you can buy her products online. It's an e commerce site, and you can also check out all the great things. I'm on it right now, and it is just a beautiful site. I want to go over just some of the things here. So, you know, if you're, if, if you and I just met today for the first time uh, on an elevator or something like that, and you told me what you did, you know, why should I buy? convince me on an elevator pitch why organic lip balm opposed to another brand that's not organic explain the benefits of 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 when we're putting this stuff on our bodies whether it's lip balm or moisturizing cream or perfume potion um why important that it's organic as opposed to a lot of the more commercial commercially available things okay sure great one reason is that um my my uh, slogan for my business is uh, Anna's Potions and Lotions, Honest Products from Nature. That's a trademark slogan. Oh. You know, yeah, when you get my products, you know that, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm telling the truth about the ingredients. And if I say I use this ingredient, I do. And you know that the, my ingredients are going to be pure and are sourced from um, places that, uh have pure products. Right. The other thing is that um, my products are great 
because I have a certification through Green America. I've, I've reached their gold seal status, which is kind of a rigorous process. And it goes all the way back to sourcing raw materials, uh, using materials that are good for people and that are healthy. So we know that my products are going to be healthy. And that, you know, that's a benefit there, knowing that I'm honestly disclosing everything. Got it. And handcraft is great. Listen, if people enjoy handcrafted products in so many different segments, and uh, whether it's uh, uh, wines now or beers, and to have handcrafted, you know, lip balms and creams and 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 even candles, I think it's uh, it's it's wonderful. I think it's just a wonderful idea. So, talk a little bit about um, uh, your your business headquarters. Uh, we were talking a little bit about off the air, but if you want to share, where are your business headquarters right? now? My business headquarters is in uh, Windsor Terrace, Brooklyn. Uh, I produce things here in my apartment. Right. Uh, My plan is to expand as my business grows. I want to, I want to keep a hand in the handmade, you know, quality right now. I craft everything myself, but I do realize that, you know, in the future I might expand, but I don't really plan on leaving Brooklyn. You know, (laughs) That's wonderful. Do, now, but since you have um, a website, are orders coming in from uh, all places around the world? Are you finding both uh, around the United States and around the world, people are uh, warming up to organic uh, skincare products and other healthcare products like that you produce? Yes, definitely. In fact, from my website as well as my Etsy site, my Etsy store, I've had orders from all over the world. I had a woman in Australia last year who wanted some of my um, creams to put in her bridesmaids' gift bags. Wonderful. So, you know, yeah, it's starting to take off around. You know, that's the great thing about uh, the Internet. And what did she, and, and how did she, I mean, how did she originally learn of your products or try it out? She went on the internet and, you know, and, and the key word was handcrafted organic skincare. Huh. Um, and yeah. And, and how about locally? Do you sell any of your products into local stores in the New York metropolitan area? I'm working. That's something that's in progress and that I'm working on. I've done a little consignment, uh, you know, early on in the business, but I, I prefer to, to get my products, you know, into stores on a wholesale basis. That's something that I'm I'm working on. Got it. I do like to work, you know, with individuals. I think that's more personal. But I think now, especially in Brooklyn, there are a lot of stores that carry handcrafted um, green products, right. and I would love to be involved. How about the bigger stores? Do you do you uh, foresee one day your products being carried by bigger chains like the Whole Foods of the world and other other chains like that? Yeah, that's a great question. In fact, you know, Whole Foods opened up, uh, you know, recently in in the Gowanus area of Brooklyn. Yeah. And um, a few years ago, I I started to look into getting my products into Whole Foods. And I I had to kind of put that on hold for a while, but now I'm starting to rethink that. In fact, last week I got the name of the person at the uh, one in in, uh, Park Slope that handles the uh, body, whole body stuff. So I intend to pursue that. I think Whole Foods would be another one of those cases where their values would be completely aligned with mine. I would love to get into Whole Foods. Well, you know, when you were uh, uh, growing up, did you ever think that this was, that eventually you'd become an entrepreneur? Was this a dream of yours or this is sort of just a natural evolution in your life becoming um, an entrepreneur? Yeah, that's a good question. No, I never, I never would have thought of this. Uh, nobody in my family has ever been an entrepreneur or in business. I started, you know, with the background. I'm also a journalist, a freelance writer. Uh, I'm a playwright. Yeah. I've done acting, now teaching, and I've had this lifelong interest in uh, environmentalism. So it's kind of like just in the past few years everything has kind of coalesced together. And I see this as a natural evolution. Um, You know, now I'm becoming an entrepreneur, but I'm not going to lose my green values. Are you you enjoying the, the ability to leverage the internet? Do you think that can help uh, take 
your great brand and his potions and lotions to the next level? Do you, do you feel that you're making progress online and that there's a lot more progress you can make? Yes, there is. And, and uh, that's a good question. And one way that I see that happening is to use my writing uh, abilities. Right. Uh, I do have a blog and I intend to start blogging more often um, and, you know, in doing some more marketing. So I definitely see that. I really think, you know, um, that, that the Internet is it's here, you know, and um, and it's not just people, you know, in their 20s and 30s who are using. And I think they say I read somewhere that one of the largest groups of people who are now buying online are people over 50. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so that that's I'm perfectly poised to kind of um, to be involved in that. And and since you're so green and you've been green before it was ever cool to be green, Debbie, talk a little bit about your commitment to minimal packaging and, and, and putting minimal packaging on your great products. Okay. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't, I, my, my soy wax candles, for example, uh, are either in glass containers or uh, metal uh, travel tins. I don't put them into another box, even though I could, and I could have the, the box that each one goes in could be made of recycled paper and recyclable. I just don't believe in, you know, adding more stuff to the waste stream. So um, you're not going to see a very, very elaborate, fancy display in a store if, if my products are in a store. I just really want to keep to that minimalist uh, thing because it's not – to me, the packaging is not as important as what's inside. Right. No, I agree with you. You know, and what's your number one seller out of all of your wonderful products? What sells the most? Um, I would say what sells the most, one thing that's really popular is my lavender shea butter hmm. uh, moisturizer. Uh, that probably is the number one seller, although the, the sweet rose cream is right behind. So that's their number one and number two, the sweet rose cream and the um, and the and the sh- and the shea uh, butter, lavender shea butter. Yeah, lavender. everybody seems to love lavender. <laughs> that's interesting. That's a um, we're down to the last two minutes or so. Do you have any pearls of wisdom for you know? Because this show airs both nationally and internationally, and there's lots of young entrepreneurs out there that want to become the next Debbie Miller. In the last minute and a half or so, do you have any pearls of wisdom that you could share for our budding entrepreneurs out there that want to become the next Debbie Miller? Uh, well, yes, and it's you know it's nothing that glamorous. It's it's. Uh, just keep at it. I, I one thing that I have is a, a, a really great sense of perseverance. You know, I I never give up. I just keep on keeping on and doing what I love. And I believe, I truly believe that if you do what you love, eventually things are going to work out for you. That's true. When, you know, as they say, uh, uh, winners never quit, and quitters never never win, never win. So uh, yeah. we love that. And uh, and again, for our listeners out there. Um, please support Debbie Miller and her great uh, brand. We need to support um, ecopreneurs out there, both small and large. And that's what this show is about, supporting uh, you know companies and people that make a difference. And, and Debbie's one of those great people. Honest Potions and Lotions, www.honestpotionsandlotions.com. Thank you, Debbie, for making honest products from nature at Honest Potions. You are truly living proof that green is good. 